There we go. Now it's recording. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, so back to presentation mode. Okay. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to go over today. We have a bunch of WebRTC PC issues. As I mentioned, the first three relate to simulcast. Um, so hopefully this won't take an enormous amount of time. Uh, but um, and this is, I guess, what most of the developers here uh, are interested in who are developing these simulcast apps. We have uh, two screen sharing issues that Henrik will talk about. Uh, and then we have a bunch of media capture main issues that UN will go through. Most of these relate to privacy of uh, some key. I guess we're also talking about the overconstrained event. Uh, Henrik will talk about that. So that's basically the agenda for today. Uh, hopefully we can get it all done in an hour and a half. So uh, let's go into the WebRTC PC issues. Uh, three of these relate to simulcast, uh, and we'll be talking about them. Okay. So uh, issue 1174 relates to how SSRCs are surfaced in the WebRTC PC API. Um, and really specifically, whether they are surfaced in the object model or in the SDP. Um, originally, as of June 5th, 2017, um, SSRCs were included in RTC, RTP encoding parameter dictionary as well as the RTX parameters and the RTP FEC parameters dictionaries. Uh, these were read-only SSRCs. They could not be set. They could only be read. Um, and this is basically what was in the June 5th, 2017 uh, document. As you can see, basically the SSRCs were put in uh, at the same level as max bit rate, max frame rate, and RID, uh, and scale resolution down by. And then we had the SSRC in the FEC parameters and in the RTX parameters uh, as well. And they were listed in a table as read-only. Um, actually, the SSRC, FEC, and RTX were all, uh, dictionaries were all uh, read-only. So that's where we were as of June 5th, 2017. Um, now, issue 1174 observed the following potential problem. That it, uh, which was you called get parameters, so like RTP sender dot get parameters, uh, it returned the SSRCs SSRC A. There was a conflict, and somehow that changed to SSRC B. And then the question was, what would happen if you then called set parameters uh, with modified parameters? Like you change something, like scale resolution down by, you call set parameters, and the SSRC doesn't match. Um, and uh, this, at the time, this was interpreted as failing with an invalid modification error since it was a read-only parameter. It didn't match. So we met uh, the June 26th meeting of the WebRTC Workgroup. The resolution was just to create a PR to, to remove this odd behavior. Um, and that's minuted in the minutes. Um, but a subsequent PR removed the SSRCs from the encoding parameters as well as, as the entire RTX infect dictionaries. Um, so we didn't just fix this little odd uh, behavior. The, the SSRCs were removed. And then it was noticed, hey, there's issues here with, it, with implementing this uh, in terms of the impact on conferencing uh, systems. Um, and so the issue was reopened at the April 2018 interim. And at that point, the resolution was to reintroduce the SSRCs into the RTC, RTP uh, encoding parameters, bring them back. Um, so um, the reason that did not happen uh, was that um, Taylor, there was a, a meeting with Taylor Brandstetter of Google, uh, and some of the conferencing developers were present at that, um, in which he proposed that it would be simpler for browsers to just continue putting the SSRCs into the SDP, uh, keeping them in the SDP in unified plan while the ecosystem transitions to mid and red based demuxing. So that was Taylor's proposal. Um, the developers looked at it and uh, who were there at the time said, hey, uh, this is okay with us um, to not have it in the object model, have it in the SDP. Um, and that was the that was the final resolution of, of the issue at the time. So the reason this has been reopened is that um, there's now been some uh, implementations are, are in progress that don't include the SSRCs within the SDP. Um, and since they've been removed from the object model, they aren't there either. 
Um, and so a number of uh, the developers who've been looking at this have expressed concern about this, uh, potentially the, the requirement that they change their back-end conferencing service to do uh, mid-based demuxing uh, fairly immediately. Um, so that's basically where we are. Um, and we've invited a bunch of the conferencing system developers here. Uh, I don't think we can probably introduce all of you, but I'll just name a few who are here. Um, to kind of give their perspective. I think we have Emil Avov of Jitsi Video Bridge. I believe we have uh, Siva Ananta Kristan of uh, Teams uh, conferencing service. We have uh, Anthony Minasali. Are you here, Anthony? Of uh, FreeSwitch uh, is here, and uh, perhaps uh, uh, Lorenzo Minero of Meet Echo. Uh, I think was going to come. Uh, Inaki Baz Castillo of Media Soup. Uh, so a bunch of people writing these conferencing systems. If I missed anybody, uh, you can you can speak up. Um, so anyway, wanted to take uh, some opinions from the developers as to um, looking at this perspective. Um, what you know, what the impact is on them of not having the SSRCs, uh, and maybe even whether you care whether it's in the SDP or in the object model. Can we can we first clarify that this is not a that that the difference is only in the new simulcast API? It's everything else is uh, remains the same. Uh, well, the original change, uh, the 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 object model originally applied to everything, so it would have uh, agreed. Yeah, but uh, what we're talking about here is, uh, yeah, the um, specifically it's specifically for uh, I mean the. The discussion is specifically about the simulcast case because it has more impact there. Um, but anyway, so uh, I'd like to um, open the floor to some of the developers just talking about what the impact is. Um, and also, you're free to talk about both the simulcast case and the non-simulcast case uh, uh, if, it, if it's relevant. Um, we don't sure. have a tool. But uh, please also say who you are. You're Hi, everyone. This is this is Emil from Jitsi. Um, I basically just want to uh, start by by saying that what we agreed on last year uh, still sounds like the easiest way to go. Uh, basically, having the SSRCs in SDP, least hassle. Um, so you don't see any benefit in having it in the object model. I uh, I. I wouldn't go that far. There, there, there are benefits, but if we're talking of, uh, like ideally, if we could get them in both places, great, fine. Uh, it's not, it's not a must-have to, to be in the object model, just as okay. it's not a must-have to be specifically in the SDP. But it has to be somewhere, and if that's the SDP, that's the lowest friction approach. Okay. Um, there have been a few opinions voiced out there, but wait, if you're doing simulcast, you should be doing RIDs. You're changing your system anyway. You might as well get it to, um, to support RIDs. This is not entirely accurate. Uh, changing your system to support the new style of signaling uh, is very, very different. And that's usually, uh, specifically in Jitsi's case, that's just a client-side change. Changing it to support RID on top of that implies involving all sorts of components through the entire ecosystem because it has to touch on the routing of, of RTP and, and all these things. So. Uh, if we can go back to let's put them in SDP, that's definitely the, low, the lowest friction approach there. Okay, uh, Iñaki here. Um, I think that, um, well, uh, SSRC uh, lines in the SDP uh, for me is not a need because I think that the, the way to go is by, by using read and signaling read to the server, and the server, in my opinion, must be really ready to. To, to process uh, read hit uh, extensions and be and even be able to to change the source SSRC if the client uh, eventually change it for any reason. So if we hard code the SSRC, uh, this is like uh, read is use, is not useful for 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 anything new. Anyway. Uh, uh, apart from from this, uh, the problem I, uh, I see in not having SSRC in the SDP is that uh, uh, in this way we, we we don't have even the CNAME parameter because the CNAME parameter is signaled 
is signaled into the into a uh, SSRC line with the CNAME attribute. Right, you, right. So it affects the CNAME. Okay. So it's not a, a big problem because uh, I opened uh, uh, an issue in, in Leaf WebRTC about this, and I was told that at the end, at least uh, Leaf uh, Chrome and Leaf WebRTC doesn't use the CNAME to synchronize incoming audio and video from the same source, but instead it, uh, it used the the media stream ID, which is something that, well, I don't agree much because there are more devices that may not uh, really on on this web concept, such as the media stream. But uh, anyway, the problem is there. And currently, um, Chrome, when using simulcast, uh, it doesn't even signal the C name even in when getting the the sender parameters. It's an empty string, so. So well, let, me, like, let me ask you a question, Anaki. Do you so in your conferencing media soup? Uh, do you support RID and MID routing today? Yes, yes. For um, okay. uh, from long, yes, and and basically I am fine with it, and I find it very very comfortable. No, it's I mean it's work, of course, but it's just mm, doing it, and after after done, it it works fine, and I see no special reason to. To have the SSRC uh, signal it into the SDP or even in the object model, I I I don't need that, need them. Okay. Uh, other developers is uh, Anthony Minasali here. Yes. Uh, any, any comments, Anthony? So we're a little bit more new to to implementing. Uh, we did an MCU first, so doing any kinds of simulcast and forwarding. We just uh, are only like a few months into it. So a little bit indifferent about that. Um, I'm, my main interest is uh, is getting that API available so that we can, you know, do it without having to do it some of the proposed wrong ways since the right way is right around the corner. So I'm kind of here to figure out like the where that stands. Uh, okay. Uh, our other uh, developers here want to comment. Is Siva here? Uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, Shiva. So uh, today we do have a simulcast implementation based on uh, the SSRC. So uh, if you have to change that, that's probably quite a bit of uh, work to support based on RID and MIT. Yeah. Yeah, so you would basically, uh, it would be difficult for you to move over to Unified Plan. Mm -hmm. Basically, if if you were forced to uh, change the cup, the back end, yeah. But the uh, the front end, the web client, not not an issue, Siva. Uh, in the sense, yeah, moving from uh, moving to unified plan is not a uh, right, right. A big issue. It's the back end. Yeah. Okay. Um, other uh, developers here. Do we have Lorenzo? Yeah, hi there. Um, hi, Lorenzo from Miteco here. Yeah, just to to add to, to what others have said, um, in Janus right now, we we do have partial support for both MID and RID, RID, sorry. And it's basically already kind of working, but I'm with Emil here saying that uh, having SSRCs in place is still the, let's say, the easiest, easiest way forward. I mean, assuming they are still going to be used on the wire anyway. So being able to signal in them, to signal them, make sure, I mean, it, may, it would even make uh, conflict resolution easier if you know in advance which all of the SSRCs involved are and so on and so forth, I think would still be helpful. But in principle, yeah, I'm, as Iñaki said, you you still, you can, you can use uh, MID and RID for that. And we have code, code in place that already starts working in that direction and it seems to be promising, even though, I mean, having SSRCs uh, would make things definitely much easier. Are there other uh, developers here who'd like to speak up on this subject? Uh, just one comment more. Just one more comment, please. Um, yeah. yeah. One problem of uh, just using uh, MIF and uh, RIF is that uh, you need to, to, nego to negotiate it at the SDP level, uh, meaning that um, for sending, that is not a problem because you get the, the offer, you read the, the meet and read values, and you are done. 
But when your peer connection is uh, bidirectional, so you send and you also receive uh, media, then uh, that's more difficult uh, for some servers because that means that you must also uh, set the meet the meet in into the RTP packets that the SFU uh, sends to the to the clients over that peer connection. And maybe the source, the original RTP source, does, uh, doesn't contain the, the myth RTP uh, extensions uh, into the RTP packet. So the SFU uh, needs to, to add them into the packet, which is not a easy task. You, you need to mangle the, the packet instead of just, of just rewriting, rewriting some, some fields, which is easier. So for people using bidirectional peer connections, uh, I agree that using uh, myth and read instead of, si of signaling SSRC uh, may be a, a bigger problem. Uh, so uh, let me just make sure I understand what you just yeah. said. Um, you said Meet Echo does support putting the MID in uh, as an SFU today, but um, uh, your, your, your concern is about legacy clients also so that uh, you don't, well, the mid is negotiated, right? So if, if a legacy client doesn't negotiate the mid, it, it won't be put in, in the SFU, right? I'm just trying to understand what you're... Yeah, okay, okay, no, the, the, the problem is that, imagine that you uh, you have a client in connected to a SFU, and right. you have a very big SDP with with many remote tracks that you are receiving. Mm -hmm. It's a media session, it must have a different uh, mid value. Right. And if you need to also send video and audio on, on the same peer connection, uh, then you need to nego negotiate, negotiate uh, meet uh, either extension. That also, that also means that you need to do it properly in the receiver side. So the packets that you receive from the SFU right. must contain the RTP meet uh, extension into them. Otherwise, the browser will reject them because uh, it doesn't, it cannot match the incoming stream or the, or the incoming track. And that means that the packet must be provided with a myth extension, even if it didn't have it in, in, in right. origin. And the origin may be a FFmpeg uh, script that just uh, streams a, a video, a video file or audio file. So maybe probably. The SFU needs to, to mangle the, the, the packet, the RTP packet, uh, add uh, RTP extensions into it, which is not uh, something so easy as just uh, rewriting other fields. Yeah, and even even if the MID was originally there, it may be not the same as the one that you're actually sending the stream to, because maybe the incoming packet was with MID1 and you're sending it to one that expected expect it to be MID52 or whatever. So. Sure. Even even just rewriting an existing extension may not may not be that easy because you may need to actually expand that extension uh, in place. So it's I mean it's doable of course, but it's not uh, exactly ideal, especially uh, ideal especially right. in terms of performance. So you're basically you're saying about. yeah, in terms of the conferencing server, it's not as easy as modifying the SSRC, which is a fixed field. Yeah, which is why I mean most uh, most of the SFUs and I, um, Janus right now because it's it's a fix that I made a couple of days ago and and Iñaki for some time already, we basically right now only allow MID for, for incoming offers. So in this case, whenever somebody is publishing, let's say, mm -hmm. and for all receive only per connections, instead the MID is disabled. So that uh, we, we accept MID for incoming streams, but for whatever we send outside, we basically don't negotiate MID just to avoid coping with that issue. But this is something that you can do whenever you are handling let's say, peer connections in a, some kind of a monodirectional way. So if you are doing something in a bidirectional fashion, as Inyaki was saying, that becomes an issue. And this is an, this was an issue, for instance, in some use cases that we have in Janus, because the SFU is one of the use cases that you can do, but we have other applications that use other other kind of plugins instead that make use of a bidirectional, uh, bidirectional feature, which are affected by this kind of behavior. Okay. Yeah, so I think what you're saying is that it's it's trickier to fully implement the mid than uh, it's tricky to fully implement it. You can do it partially, but not uh, necessarily completely. And there's performance issues uh, potentially. Um, any other uh, developer feedback?
Okay. Um, so uh, at least so far, I haven't heard anybody arguing to put this back into the object model. Uh, is there anyone who wants to contradict that? That that that's there's not much interest in that. Okay. So I, I think the argument here is really about uh, about having it in the SDP uh, or not, not not the object model necessarily. Um, are there any uh, browser uh, vendors who want to talk about this? Uh, uh, UN, do you have a comment to make? Um, sorry, I, I was not really following, but um, so there will there is no plan to change the resolution that is on the slide, right? Well, we are to that. well, it was reopened because uh, the understanding had been that the the browsers would put the SSRCs in to the SDP. Um, that was the that was how the issue was resolved, so that uh, we didn't didn't put it back into the object model. But the reason it's been reopened is that um, Chrome M seventy four does not include the SSRCs for simulcast. So um, is are you saying UN that that uh, Safari is intending to keep the SSRCs for simulcast? Um, I don't think that we have a position okay. there right now. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone from Firefox? Team? Well, uh, I believe Firefox is including them right now. Yeah. Uh, but I also know that we've been vocal that um, as a long-term solution, uh, people should be able to do what they need solely with mid and rig. So I think we see it as a legacy mm -hmm. uh, feature right now. So it doesn't necessarily need to be in specs, perhaps. but um, that maybe uh, individual browsers could uh, treat as legacy for a while. Uh, I guess there's some concerns about, you know, would people ever transition away from SSRCs if they had them now? I guess that's the, I think that's where we are. Well, I think we've heard from some of the conversation developers that they would, they're interested in doing it, maybe encountering some issues, uh, which, um, some of those issues, though, like the performance, um, might be things that might cause developers to just keep the SSRCs anyway if they can get higher <laughs> forwarding rates or something. Uh, but uh, and other other ones sounded more transient, like uh, issues that uh, could be gotten over with some more work or uh, questions. Um, any other browser vendors want to speak up? Um, yeah, maybe I'll say something. Okay, Amit. Yeah, so being the one who removed the SSRCs, um, sh shoot all the arrows this way. Um, what I haven't heard, so wait, let me give some background on why I removed them. The problem is that the SSRCs conflict with the RID identifiers. So imagine I give you um, three RIDs and I give you three SSRCs, and now you're tasked with understanding which SSRC works with each RID. We, we would need a solution that would somehow be able to map them, you know, give a one-to-one -one mapping. And what happens if the SSRC changes for whatever reason? Um, RTX SRC, SSRCs, if they're, if those are needed as well, not 100% sure how those would would be passed in a, in a similar way. There, there are all these issues with conflicting IDs, um, which is why they were removed. So at least, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but. Uh, Traditionally, the SSRC conflict problem was kind of swept under the rug. Um, you know, when you had an offer previously, the SSRCs came out, and there was no promise they wouldn't change, although I think a bunch of implementations didn't even do much in the way of conflict detection. So I think it, the understanding has always been the SSRCs are, there's no guarantee they won't change. Um, even in the object model, there was never any event for SSRC conflict or anything like that. Well, maybe you could sniff it out from stats, but... Well, there's never any problem with SSRCs in the non-simulcast scenario because, and I'm talking about unified plan because there's only one, um, one SSRC per media section, so the mid header extension is sufficient to, you, you know, unambiguously route and understand and identify the packets. Mm -hmm. The mid will not change. Um, so if we're speaking on the technology that's that's um, you know put forth in the spec. We're, we're not talking about plan B semantics because this API is not even available on plan B semantics. 
mm -hmm. by unified plan semantics, which are not supposed to signal RIDs, uh, SSRCs at all, and only use MIDs and RIDs. Um, and just to be 100% clear on this, I probably already said it, we are not removing SSRCs from any existing scenarios. We only removed it from this scenario because of the conflict. Um, let, let me say a few other things, please. Um, so what I have- So Amit, can I ask you a yes. question? Of course. Uh, just to make sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying that because mapping information is not available in the SDP, and it's kind of unclear how to map SSRCs to, to, to RIDs, that's why you ended up removing SSRCs, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. If we were to come up with a with an easy mapping that has no, you know, I put forth in the GitHub a, a bunch of scenarios that I thought about how things could get really messed up with these, then I don't really see a, a problem with the, um, with adding the SSRCs to the, um, to the SDP, except from the next thing I was going to talk about, which is, is anybody ever going to stop using them? This seems like we're saying we're not going to spec it out because it's a temporary solution, but it seems to be very permanent. So doing work is always harder than not doing work. I realize that, um, but I have never, I haven't heard anyone say that anyone that said that they are not supporting mids and rids say that they intend to support it or even propose any timeline as far off as it may be. So what I've been hearing is, um, you know, we would have to do work to do this and doing work is harder than not doing work. So we want SSRCs, but there's no commitment to ever moving away well, from I mean, We did have two developers, Lorenzo and Inaki, say they are working on mids and rids, but they've encountered some issues with it. Correct. Yeah, that's, so it's not like people don't want to do it, but the issues, um, some of the issues do seem like they might cause people to remain with SSRCs like the perf issue. So it really, it really would depend. So the perf issue, so if you are writing your own SFU and you're writing your own client, then you might be able to make assumptions that your SFU is going to be contacted from your client. And then you might be able to make um, certain limitations such as limiting mids to only one byte. And mm -hmm. then there's suddenly they're a fixed length. You put right. the mids in your client and then there's no problem with rewriting the mids if you ever need to, because it's just like rewriting a Circe's. So I don't think these issues, are, we can't overcome them, right? Uh, what, I'm, what I was saying is that I did hear people that already support it or are working on support for that. And, and, but from people who, who are not working on support for that, I didn't hear anything about if they're ever going to plan doing that work. No, in, um, fact, I, in fact, I believe that's, that's kind of what I said. Uh, basically the entire uh, support of unified plan becomes a one huge uh, unseparable chunk of work that involves different components if you have to combine it together with RID and MID support. And otherwise, it's just easier to do it. Okay, first we do unified in the client, we worry about the bridge later, uh, and, and at that point that will come as well. Now, there's a much bigger discussion as to what is exactly the value that comes out of RID, because conflict <laughs> resolution isn't you know, isn't a, isn't a particularly sexy sell. So, um, uh, I, it, and, and I kind of, I hope I'm not hearing, you know, we're doing this because we want a strong army into supporting this new thing that actually doesn't give you any value. Um, I, I, I hope that we're doing this. Emil? You got cut off. Sorry, uh, I cut off. So uh, I hope that we're doing this sort of call to kind of, hey, what would, what would make sense to everyone? Um, sort of thing. Yeah, I, I do want to ask a question of Amit. Uh, you, you're raising the issue of mapping the SSRCs to the RIDs, and, and you're right, it doesn't do that in the SDP. In fact, we didn't really even solve that in the object model, so neither of those two things give it. But I, I guess my question for the developers is, does anyone, I mean, say you just put the SSRCs without mapping them, Amit. I'm just asking a question of the developers. Would that cause a problem to anyone to not have that mapping? I'm, I'm just trying to understand. So. You don't care. You basically, as I understand it, the, the case would be for the developers, and correct me, uh, would be if you're not using the RIDs, you're not going to care about the mapping because you kind of kind of ignore the, the, the exactly. RID info anyway, right? Okay. But the mapping tells you which stream is which. There's no way to for you to know, to, to understand that, hey, this is the high quality stream, this is the low quality stream. This right. Is the, without well, yeah, we can, that that's, that that's true satisfactory. In, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Sorry, that's satisfactory to be done exactly the same way as it is today. 
in Chrome, uh, in the plan based semantics. So order based is fine. Yeah. So, but that's not the case. Order based is not what what happens because you can set your um, scale resolution down by, and and hopefully in the future you'll be able to to modify these settings because as as the next issue suggests, simulcast layers can be dropped. So so you need to specify the your preference of order because it might be that your network forces um you know some of the layers to drop. And then if you don't get the right layers, then no, I mean order based issue. in the SDP. Yeah, I, we did. Um, we have had a bunch of issues relating to order, and I, as I recall, what we said is that uh, uh, the. Uh, I, I think we did. We did address ordering, didn't we, Henrik? We've been talking about this for a while. When they're negotiated, the the you, it's like codec preferences. You prefer the first one. Right, right, right. But that that's for the yeah. drop issue that we'll talk about. But um, I'm just trying to understand whether, in yeah. fact. Uh, as to which I mean, ones to prioritize, uh, didn't Harald suggest? I mean, so you have the uh, you put the SSRGs in the order. It's true that the browser can stop sending any of these things or can inactivate an, a layer or something. Uh, are it's you saying active. that it, it becomes confusing as to? I mean, all the SSRGs are there, whether they're being sent at a given time is a different issue. I think. I'm just trying to understand what the what the problem. Yeah, is. there's yeah. there's mo there's multiple problems. So yeah, all the SSRGs. Should be there. Some of them might not be sent if a layer is paused or not right. or right. not paused. Um, but also, if layers get dropped, because at a certain point we might drop layers. So you, there's no real way for you to communicate wh which stream is which, right? We're because the RIDs we know how to communicate that, right? We're saying right. you set the RID and you tell me the first RID is called F, and and right. your application logic says that that's the full stream, or or wh or whatever, right? But there's no such thing on the SRC. The, SR, the odd SSRC is not going to be the full stream, and the even one is going to be the the medium stream. There's no there's no way to do that. So if you were only to see the SSRCs, and uh, rem uh, remember that your client can set and should set the the configuration for the layers, how you know temporal right. scaling or or spatial scaling, then there's no way for you to really relay that information. Right. So that, but that info was provided by the SSRC in the object model, basically, because it was then linked to the scale resolution down by. Yes. Right. So yes. you're basically saying there's information that was in the object model that isn't in the SDP, and I guess. Well. Uh, yeah. The information is there. It's just not c tied to the to the SSRCs. So we should right. be moving away from <laughs> from SSRCs everywhere because of that's how unified plan works, right? Yeah. So the S so, yeah. The information is is there, but we don't know how to map them yeah. to SRCs. So I guess this is a question for the developers. Uh, I guess I'll ask Lorenzo. Does this is this a, pro a a problem not being able to map the SSRCs to the specific characteristics as as they were in the object model? Lorenzo, can you comment? Uh, no, I mean, I, I understand Amit's point by saying that there is no current way of saying, for instance, that RID equals uh, A, for instance, is actually mapped to a specific SSRC that you see. And, and in fact, there is a problem in, in figuring out the, let's say, the, the problem ordering of, of streams in, in that specific sense. In general, I mean, uh, as I said, I think that the, the uh, uh, RID, both read and meet them, should be able to to provide additional information. Should, I mean, you are we are still able to derive the SSRC from that information internally because, of course, routing on SSRC is much more efficient than doing a string compare for each packet that we receive. So we still are able to implicitly figure out SSRC. I I think I mean I still have a bit of a doubt when it comes to let's say. Uh, RTX SSRCs and stuff like this, even though I guess that the RTP stream, RTP repair stream ID can be used for that. Uh, I'm, that I mean, but, for, for now, it's it's really hard for me to, to figure this out because I I haven't been able to, to actually test the the simulcast the new simulcast, uh, simulcast stuff in M74 because apparently it doesn't even set it doesn't even set the RID in the packets. So even, it, it even when I try. No, I mean it didn't for me. So I'm, I don't know if I'm doing something incorrectly, but I, uh, I wasn't able to to test and figure out if uh, if there was something that I was doing wrong. I mean well, I wasn't getting those in the, in the that I received, so I actually ended up with an incomplete session because of that. So 
Yeah. Okay, so so talk to me about that um, offline, and I'll and I'll help you out. With Just that. A, a question for Emil. I'm still trying to understand this issue of the mapping of the SSRCs uh, to the characteristics of the stream. Is this is this a I mean, that that's basic. We didn't have this in plan B either, right? And uh, Emil, so what, is that, is that going to cause a problem for you? Like, so in, in plan B, is which resolution? Yeah, in plan B, you could, uh, they were ordered in the SDP in the order of resolution. And that was good enough. Yeah, so I guess what, you, what we could do if the SSRCs were in the order of the encoding parameters, Right. That, that's so unreasonable. Yeah. The encoding parameters, then you could map them effectively. Does well, that make any sense, Summit? Well, yeah, that's how, if we were ever to send them, we would send um, an, a one line with just like the ASIM SSRC, the, the current legacy group, yeah. that would say, you know, SSRC 1, comma 2, comma 3. Yeah, but, and if they were the same order as encoding parameters, then you could map them back and know which resolutions were which. Right. Yeah, so but I, the, Is there any problem with that? Yes, because I feel that th that it's going to be a slippery slope because that's not that's not going to be sufficient for you, because if I only tell you, you know, I have RID one, two, and three, and then I have SSRCs ten, oh, sorry, eleven, twelve, and thirteen that that map. Now you're going to ask me, hey, what is the MSID? What is the C name? What is the RTX SSRC? And all of these things, which I don't plan on adding. I don't want to add all the ASSRC lines that exist in the in the current model because I don't want the order of the of of the lines to matter. I want to have one semantic line that defines the ordering. Mm. I, I, I think right? this is a, a simplification because there is no <clears throat> sorry in simulcast. In fact, there is no order of layers. I mean, that's a simplification in my opinion. Uh, you have different layers. No, they may be low, medium, and high quality or resolution or whatever, but they must not. They don't need to to, to be that. They they. they, they you, you must apply different configuration, different settings to every layer, and it doesn't mean that one is low and the other one is medium or high. So I think that absolutely correct. Talking about ordering here is just like saying that okay, Chrome did this uh, okay and it worked for me, and it, this is what I need. And um, period. But I, I don't think that's the way to go. Uh, so okay. we, we so there's an ordering. Yeah, we did have we did have to uh, introduce ordering into the encoding parameter because there are all kinds of questions like if you did a get and set and change the order but you know kept everything the same what would happen so anyway we, d we did try to clarify the the ordering does have uh, it does have meaning and we'll talk about the drop reference yeah that, it know. means ordering is preference not not characteristics of the stream just okay. preference just so preference. you can spe yeah so you can specify in Chrome at least I'm not sure about the other right? you can specify and not it's not saying anything it's just I just really don't know uh, you can specify you know scale resolution down by to make it medium high low low high medium however you want and the only the only meaningful interpretation is just a priority of which of the streams yeah so um, what we've talked about here is that Introducing SSRCs, we've talked about introducing SSRCs corresponding to the encoding parameters. Uh, Amit brought up the issue of SSRCs relating to RTX and FEC being somewhat of a uh, another complicating factor. Um, that was in the object model, isn't anymore. Um, I, I have a question for the developers: um, Is is it? Uh, is omitting the RTX and FEC SSRC is going to be a problem? If you don't use air IDs or repair IDs, yes. Yeah. Uh, Emil, do you, that would be an issue, right? To, to not have the RTX and FEC SSRCs? It, it sounds like it would be, although I'm I'm not able to wrap my head around it right now. You would, yeah, it'd be an issue. <laughs> yeah, so you kind of have to have them, you would have to have them really for everything. Um, and, and that, we, yeah. yeah, and the groups, yeah, the association. Yeah, I mean, basically, more or less, what was in Plan B would have to be there to completely uh, address this, I think. Um, so, what was the issue of of not putting out the RTX and FEC SSRCs? Uh, I mean, uh, there's there's no issue. We're just degenerating back to why even have a why even have the new format? Why not just use the old format to signal all the SSRCs as they were? And just like you know, the munching scenario. Why not just enable people to, to instead of munching the SDP, to 
directly generated. Like the idea is that is that the new format is better because it, because it allows you to add RIDs, which give you implicitly give you RTX because it's just the same RID ID on the on the repair extension header. It gives you all these benefits. But if we're going back to the old older way, why not just you know uh, standardize that? Yeah, but I think that there are two different things here. Is one is the SSRCs should be uh, exposed in the API, another if the SSRCs are present in the SDP, and right. because mm, we are kind of missing the both in the both issues. Because if you put the the RTX in the group in the SDP, you don't need to map it in the API, but you need to you need it some somewhere. I mean, if you are not doing RIDs, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, ba basically, just uh, as we described in the history, the, the um, SSRCs have always been part of the API from the beginning. Um, and we've, you know, had multiple meetings where we've decided to have uh, SSRC support in some form. Um, and, and the reason was really because of this transition issue that's been, that's been described. It's not like people are saying, oh, we never want to go to the new thing. It's just uh, separating out the changes in the conferencing server from the changes in the client. Um, and, you know, we have a, uh, the charter expires in March 2020, by which time we're supposed to demonstrate that, you know, plan, uh, unified plan is usable and, and get the basic browser interop issues solved. But, uh, you know, adding the conferencing server uh, work onto that would, would make that deadline harder to meet. Um, so that's, um, I think, where we are. Um, so um, w what I'd like to do at this point is kind of get a get a sense of the room as to uh, basically what what people uh, feel ought to be done here. Um, can Can I ask a question regarding yeah. your last statement? Yeah. Um, what would be the the problem if? legacy, I'm going to call them legacy for lack of better word. Okay, well, let's just say SFUs that don't support RIDs and MIDs continue using the munging scenario, whereas right. in, in their client apps, because it's an app change, right. this is a new API, and new clients move to use the new one. Is there a problem with, with that? Well, yes, I think there is a problem because um, uh, from a W3C perspective, what it would mean is we wouldn't be able to demonstrate the interoperability of of, uh, of unified plan. So, I mean, part of it is we're supposed to develop tests. We have, um, when we talked about WPT tests, they were based on the SSRC model because they included loopback tests. Um, we also have kite tests, but those work with the, the conferencing servers that uh, the developers have just mentioned. And all those tests would fail. Um, if we don't include the SSRC. So basically, we wouldn't get to the point of making Unified Plan a standard because we wouldn't meet the W3C criteria. Okay. Now, if we do meet the W3C criteria, right, we get all this done, uh, you know, WebRGC gets approved, it goes to PR, all this. Um, at that point, because if assuming we don't change the standards to mandate the SSRCs, you know, a browser vendor could say, say a year or two from now, say, hey, we're going to deprecate this thing. You have another whatever 18 months to get rid of it. It's not part of the standard. You knew this was going to happen, uh, but at that point, you've got the interoperability. You've got everybody's client working on unified plan, so it's it's no longer an issue of the WebRTC 1.0 standard because that's that's gone to PR. It's really you you've separated the back end work from the front end work. So so, so let me so complicate saying, this. What, so yeah. you are saying that this the problem is that the simulcast playground does not work without SSRCs. So that's the main problem. Well, we we can get that to work. I have a yeah. I have a version that works, and I heard that um, Fipo has a version that works. Well, it's it's kind of complex because he has to dig things out of the stats as I as I. Yeah, but if the, the playground is is uh, something that we can solve without doing all of this, right? I can I imagine we put something in a stat in stats, and then we just get a playground to work that everyone can use. The playground is not part of the API or spec, right? Right. It's just a, a tool. We yeah. can get a tool to work if Test we. Tool. Like, I'd rather hack a tool than hack the spec. Hmm. Right. In, in my opinion, just for reference. Oh, sorry. 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 Right. Uh, Jan over here, just to interject that uh, uh, I believe SSRCs are still re returned in stats. I didn't want to mention that, but if we're talking about hacks, that might be. 
yeah, yeah they are returning that. that. That that isn't use. I mean, that's useful for the test tool, but uh, it, the stats I don't think are ready in time to do an offer. So you can't uh, you can't actually solve the signaling problem with that. Right. So, so let me complicate your your interrupt scenario. Um, so, regardless of if SSRCs are signaled or not, the um, the requirement will be that the SFU or yeah the other party will have to negotiate back the the simulcast line, including RIDs and including RID extensions, right? Because all of those are going to be sent. So, what this means is that the server is going. So, there's going to have to be work done on the server regardless. That's not true, actually. Uh, no, it's not true. Uh, yeah. Why would you munge it? No, you, you basically the all header extensions can be negotiated off. So basically, if the other server doesn't come back with the RID or the mid header extensions, it means they shouldn't be sent. That's fine, and then simulcast will not be sent. Well, but that's, only the that, first layer will be sent. Yeah, but that's that's a problem, right? You're kind of mixing um, header uh, header extension negotiation with functionality. So that's that's a bug. How 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 is it a bug? It's it's support for this. How do you send simulcast that's supposed to use RIDs and MIDs if the well, client, if, if the other party says no no RIDs? Doesn't doesn't the spec say that if if you don't understand the simulcast stuff, you just drop everything except the first one and then exactly simulcast reply, is not sent. Reply will be well, you can understand it, but you might not negotiate the RID extension, right? Well, that tells me that you don't understand it. No, not quite the same thing, I don't think. Emil, do you want to comment? I, I think he had to drop. Oh, OK. Yeah, well, uh, Lorenzo, can, can you comment? I mean, uh, say, um, say you, uh, in your conferencing server, right, do you allow the client to negotiate mid and rid separately? Yeah, I mean, we do support simulcast both from Firefox and Chrome, and, and they use different ways of doing simulcast, as you know. So in Chrome, we just rely on SSRC. In Firefox, we, we mostly rely on SSRC, but we do support uh, read as well. So, And that's uh, done, and you, how, do you, how do you negotiate which mode you use? Yeah, it's really depending on whether read is in place or not, and whether right. we, we do have the SSRC available. If we do have the SSRC available, then we know that there are going to be, I don't know, let's say three different streams that are going to be sent, and so we are we are able to to handle all of them three at the same time and and route accordingly. So uh, you are definitely able to do simulcasting without using read if you just use SSRC. But uh, I mean, I understand them. It's point here by saying that. Uh, and it's it's kind of mixing mixing different things in here, but from a functionality perspective, yeah, you can do simulcast without those. So yes, you can you can do it with only SRCs because we're already doing it in the in the legacy scenario. My point is, what I'm saying is that if we're doing it with a new scenario where we're signaling RIDs and we're signaling a simulcast line, mm -hmm. then the response must, as it, it appears in the spec, also contain the same RIDs. And the simulcast line in the reverse order, and it also, you know, must be able to support the RID extension because otherwise, there's no way for us to send the RIDs. So if that is not negotiated, then simulcast will be dropped, and by dropped, I mean only the first layer, and this is where priority comes in again, is going to be sent. So I just wanted to comment on this very briefly. Uh, what actually gets the SDP that actually gets into the browser um, can be handled entirely at the client side. Um, that doesn't mean necessarily munging it, but part of the offer answer engine can actually live in the client side, which is what happens for us, for example. So right. the fact that you change how that operates doesn't mean that you're changing your server. You don't necessarily have SDP going all the way to the server. Well, that, that's munging pretty much because you're changing. No, it's the... not. No, it's not. No, it's, no. Not, it's, not my, it's, yeah, it's, it's offer answer. It's offer answer. Yeah, it, so, you have to distinguish the signaling from changing the S SDP and set local and set remote. Right, right. So I'm saying, so without changing the context of the text, you can do whatever you want, and that's not munching. But what I'm saying is, it, there's no way for you to signal me back the A simulcast line if your SFU doesn't support it without munging. Mm, no, well, I, I think that's. I think what Emil is saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, Emil, is that basically you. Everybody here is already saying they're going to change their client to do Unify Plan. I, I don't think that's under discussion. 
but basically the, the issue would be what's signaled to the SFU. And I guess you're saying, Emil, you're basically gonna, uh, in your client, gonna take off the RID and uh, MID stuff, right? Uh, yes, just exactly. Signal the SSRC to your SFU, and then uh, take your SFU answer and put it into the format that the browser wants, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I understood, but that's munging, right? That you're, is not munging. No, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. So, munging, the term munging has been used to refer to like changing stuff between create offer and set local and all that. That's forbidden now in the spec. So you can't. Really so, okay. So, but you can, what you can I'm, modify between, you know, uh, the, the actual offer answer and what, what goes in the API. What I mean by munging is messing with with the SDP in any in any way. I don't mean it to mean that you're changing it between what it was to, to achieve new new functionality, which you're pretty much doing. Yeah, I guess the real point though was that he doesn't have to take the opportunity. Basically, people mute. Uh, that I guess Emil was saying he doesn't have to change his conference server. Um, I, I understand that that can be done, but the, but the meaning of doing that is that you're signaling to the application that you support RIDs and that you support uh, routing by RIDs. Just be aware that there's a conflict there. Yeah, but I, I mean, I guess on the conferencing server, right, Emil, if you happen to get RIDs or couldn't turn them off, you would just ignore the header extension. That's that's what you're supposed to do by spec, yes. And, yeah. and I do want to insist very much on the fact that uh, this offer answer, as far as the browser is concerned, is supposed to happen, well, you know, between the offer and the answer. And there's no one says that, hey, if you do it at the SFU, it's not munging. If you do it elsewhere, then it is munging. That is not, that's just not accurate. Yeah, um, I mean, basically what people have been talking about is they just want to separate the work on the client from the conferencing server. I don't think anybody said they're not going to do the client work. So, you know, anything needed to change the SDP into the right format for their conferencing server, I think is... Uh, Really not a problem. Nobody's objected to that part of it. So not, it's not the changing; it's the semantics. So what I mean by semantics is, you are in fact telling the the other peer connection that you're interopting with that you support doing this, that you support um, the um, demuxing or accepting and understanding the RID header extension. That's what I mean. The semantic meaning of you signaling this ha means that I should be able to trust that for my RTX and for my um, and for my uh, signaling of dreams. That's what it means. Can you yeah. think of any bad consequences that would come as a result? Well, I guess the question is, uh, say, say, let's assume for a second that we put all the uh, SSRC info in, right? The, the uh, you know, Amit is still sending the RIDs, you know, in RTX and FEC and all that stuff. I'm just trying to understand if anything bad will happen here if the conferencing server just, it has the SSRC info it needs. It just, uh, you know, drops all the RID header extensions, doesn't look at them. Can SSRCs change? Well, they always have, but that's always been true. Even in plan B, they could change. And, uh, in, in practice, they really don't though, because in these conferencing servers, it's the only conflict would be between a given participant and a conferencing server. So it's kind so of- So the only change on conflict, that's what you're saying? Which yeah. Which happen never. It never happens, but it just happens in tons of specifications. So. Yeah. It, in practice, it doesn't happen really. But yeah. Okay. Um, so if, so we, if we add if we add the SSRCs for each red uh, in order in the SDP, what are the problems? The remains. Well, the the remaining issue that Amit brought up was you have to do it for the RTX and the FEC as well. Right, or uh, you have to really do it. You have to do it completely for everything, or right for for this to get the backward compatibility issue solved that people have been talking about. So um, I haven't heard anything. I mean, we're, we've said there's certain limitations. You couldn't map one to the other, but I think that's handled by the ordering. Uh, and uh, so nobody's saying this is a perfect thing, but I think people are saying I'm. What I'm hearing is it's good enough. Um, and I haven't heard anything that would, I haven't heard anything yet that would break, that would cause the backend servers to have to uh, do additional work if this were put in. Um, at least that's how I understand it at the moment. Um, what, do you, what do you mean by this? I, well, I think that the proposal on the table was the original resolution was to keep the SSRCs in the SDP more or less as they are in Plan B. Um, that's kind of what the resolution of 1174 was. 
and I guess what I'm trying to understand is if there's anything, uh, any reason that can that can't be done. It is being done in Firefox. Um, I don't know if anybody's encountered an, uh, an issue with Firefox to say why it doesn't work, but. Um, well, I think the issue is more of, um, is this a legacy thing or is it a spec thing? Well, I yeah. think the reason it wasn't put in the spec is that people didn't want to enshrine it forever. I think what we're right. really talking about here is just to get us to the point where we get Weber C1.0 to, to, to PR, right? Do all the testing and all the interop, prove it works. Uh, well, I think we're, separate that from changing the conferencing service. Just put that off for a while. I, I think we're at a crossroads, though. If if Chrome adds SSRCs, um, you know, uh, I think our plan for ever removing them would be uh, quite, uh, you know, that might never happen, right? Well, well, uh, okay. Well, as opposed to. You still have a pro transition problem, though, because a bunch of the people here will probably remain on Plan B. So the other alternative would be to keep them with Plan B and have no interop. You know, it's going to create problems for running on multiple browsers, too. So, Right. You have to get them off of this somehow. I don't know that. It, I, the question is, which is worse, having interoperable WebRTC, you know, API, and then getting people to move, or having them never move to WebRTC 1.0? And having them do proprietary stuff forever, I think the the latter one's so, probably worse. <laughs> so, aren't we lying here? So, um, by saying we have we, we've gotten WebRTC, the spec is done. Here's the spec, and look, everything is interopping. But it's right. interopping with things that are not in the spec, and it's interopping or interopping because of things that are not in the spec. So, aren't we lying by saying that this is a success? So, well, can I get clarity on this interop discussion? I mean. Uh, yeah. To me, the only interoperate testing is whether the different browsers are able to interact with a server that would be compliant with unified plan, and whether well, the, the things that are actually deployed in the market are or are well, not or are not. To give all you an compliant. example, in, in Prague, we're about to have a hackathon which will attempt to demonstrate interop between unified plan on various browsers and conferencing servers as they exist today. Yeah, but that's, that's not what we're doing. We need to demonstrate for REC is what I'm saying. I mean, I think it's a great thing to do, uh, and we definitely want. Well, if we don't have any interop with conferencing servers, that's I think. You know, so uh, one question is whether there is one server that has enough support for unified plan that we could test interop with that particular server. And again, I'm not saying we don't I need to I think we've care, heard, we've heard know, today that none of, there, there are no implementations that work that completely implement unified plan in both directions. So there is no, there is no such animal. And uh, can we mock it? Uh, it's uh, uh, you just heard the issues from Lorenzo and Inaki that I mean I'm assuming they're working as hard as they possibly can but uh, yeah but they have different constraints like they have an actual commercial product and that comes with lots of constraints I'm talking about having something good enough for testing interop not uh, for yeah um, I'm not aware of any such thing existing right now but adding SSRCs is also good enough for testing interop so if it's about lying then why does it matter where we're lying well, it's not it's not lying in the sense that SSR uh, in the sense that having interoperability, you know, demonstrating the thing actually. I mean, also having very big differences in the SDP between browsers is is not going to make people's life easier, right? It's going to make it a lot harder for developers to to uh, develop stuff. So well, we can make the same argument for Plan B. Let's say hypothetically all browsers supported Plan B, would that be interop to the spec? No, because it wouldn't be spec compliant. It would be interop, no. but not to the spec. So, <laughs> but so we don't have that. We don't have that either. <laughs> okay. So can I clarify something? Yeah. RID, RIDS is not um, synonymous with uh, unified plan. We have support for unified plan simulcast with the munging technique as well. It's, you don't have to have RIDS in unified plan if that's where we need to go. Yeah. I mean, I think that's important. I mean, people uh, wishing to, to use uh, legacy simulcast can still do it by munging by munging the, the SDP as they probably do do now, even in Plan B or Unified Plan. Um, for people using the new API, which is under specification right now, 
uh, I, my conclusion is that we don't need the SSRC even in the model, in the object model, nor in the SDP for nothing. Yeah, but well, just for signaling the C name, but that that uh, may be done using any other trick. But uh, that's something else that we need to understand the C name problem. That's something. Yeah, it's different. Different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, I know, I know. But yeah. I mean that I, I have found no reasons in this uh, meet for now to to keep sending signaling uh, the SSRCs, nor in the SDP, nor in the in the RTP uh, encodings. Yeah, I agree. As long as people can still use the old SDP engine to 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 enable simulcast, I don't see any any reason, at least from my side, to keep yeah, the SSRCs is, yeah. and the APIs. If you use the munging technique, there's no way to pick the size or the FPS of the screens. Uh, no, I mean, but you want all the world, the good without the worst. Yeah, I, I agree. With, I agree with that. I mean, if you if you're munging, you don't support these things, then I guess you don't get the the ability to specify the size. No, uh, that's not. I mean, if you can, if you just. It's not in the API. It was originally in the API, right? You, the, to to connect them, um, and uh, here I guess you'd have to build your own table, right? That would basically map the SSRCs to the uh, to the encoding parameters. I actually don't. I'm actually not sure what would happen because you might be able to do the munging, and then you might be able to call get parameters, and as a result of get parameters, get um, Get, get the actual parameters and then ch modify them. Maybe that would be possible so that you can change it. It would be more, you know, yeah, cumbersome. It would, it would basically separate the object model and the STP. You'd have to keep your own table of, of what SSRCs, you know, corresponded to what encoding parameter lines. But, you know, if you, keep, if you, if you do the ordering as was suggested, that would be a thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, a bunch of the clients here, I mean, um, Emil and others, uh, I assume they're going to use their transceiver with the encodings and set and get parameters and all that stuff. Uh, the intent is really to use the uh, Weber to see one OCR and unified plan as designed. Um, yeah. So, I mean, basically, you know, here, as I've said that this, we've had multiple meetings on this subject that at no point did the working group agree to remove SSRCs from, from the API. So that's been pretty constant for the last uh, two years. Um, so really it's only a question of whether they're in, uh, they're in the uh, SDP or in the object model. What I'm hearing here uh, is that there's no, no interest in reintroducing them in the object model. Um, so but that kind um, of... can we go back to the lie argument? So um, yeah. unless, uh, so uh, I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was it was Jan? I don't know. Uh, said that we would be lying in either either way. Can you clarify that again? Because putting them in the actual object model is a way to say no. We're not lying. The SFUs might be lying, but we're not signaling things that we shouldn't be signaling. Whoever made that argument that we're lying either way, could they clarify, please? Well, that is not entirely true. I mean, in RTP parameters, you also uh, signal that there are also some some parameters like the max bit rate that uh, then are not signaled into the SDP anyway. So it's like different information that must not be transmitted to the to the other side. Correct. Not all the information is transmitted. I'm uh, a lot of things. We're assuming that there's going to be off band or not, or yeah, off-band signaling by the application layer. Yeah. In, in fact, simulcast is based on that because there's no way, the, the spec currently doesn't give away. So some of the of the things that RIDs add is that RIDs add, add the ability to add um, some parameters on these, uh, on the identifier. So I can say a RID for, RID number one has a max bit rate of something. And that means that the bit rate cannot go higher, but it can be lower. Um, because it doesn't really identify it, we have removed that from the from the spec, and we're not using that. Um, but yeah, you're right. There's no way to to signal this, and we said that these would be signaled off band. Maybe the app would say F is always this, H is always that. Yes, or... that's what uh, what I don't in, um, in media soup. Uh, I know that the client will signal the encodings in a specific order. Uh, 
so the server knows which uh, spatial layer is uh, every every stream but that's something up to the application it's not something that is uh, transmitting the sdp uh, and there is no uh, there is no a must for for encoding being ordered from low to to high that's just uh, up to the application yeah, I, I would agree. I don't think that breaks interop or says that, that it's not working as intended. You still get three streams. You might not be able to really know what stream is the largest, but you can still probably process these streams to understand that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's some, I'm not full aware of all the extension headers. Maybe there's an extension header that tells you the size or resolution, or you can maybe go by the BP. I don't know. Oh, you I don't think that breaks in interop. Autobahn and you are gone. <laughs> Yeah, 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 but I'm, so that's my point is that I don't think this is required to prove interop, that you know exactly what's going on in each of the layers. Just like you don't know if I'm just sending one layer, you don't really know in advance in signaling what the resolution of that layer is. You're just yeah. getting my video. So I don't think that breaks the, the interop argument that, that unified plan would be working. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Okay. Yeah, so where would, where, where would could... the other... So interrupt could test that one of the layers, uh, you know, gets scaled down. Not necessarily which one, I guess. Yeah. Um. They don't really have to be scaled down, right? For simulcast means that I'm sending multiple layers for whatever reason. Maybe, um, maybe what I'm sending is I'm sending one layer that has been treated with some optical filter that that helps people with color blindness to see the screen better. Maybe that's what it's doing. There's no, I don't. In, in ORTC, you can even specify the, the codec be used in every in encoding. So you may yeah. even send the same stream, the same video stream uh, using BPH and H264. And that part of that simulcast, well, it's not simulcast, but it's different encodings. This is about encodings, not about simulcast. Simulcast is just a, a very uh, a, a use case of sending multiple encodings. Exactly. I don't think we need to, to even have them being, uh, you know, to prove that they're different. Just that there's there are multiple that there's one source that or that that's get that gets inserted into the um, peer connection, for lack of better uh, term, one sort one uh, source that gets con inserted into the peer connection and gets transceived multiple times to the SFU. Yes. Okay, um, uh, I think we're going to need to bring this to the list probably. Um, I would like to do a f at least a few more issues uh, before we uh, finish the meeting. So I think at this point we're going to move on. Um, um, Bernard, can I ask yes. one question? Uh, yes. Just on, on goals, is it a 1.0 requirement that this work with uh, legacy conferencing servers? Well, uh, if you wanted – with in the current state, you can't. The, the implementations are different enough that I don't think you can claim that either the API or the protocol interoperates. So that would probably, you know, that could result in removal of the entire simulcast material from the document because it, we wouldn't be able to meet the PR requirements for interoperability or uh, uh, of the W3C. So I mean, I think this whole basically we we could basically fail on on this issue. Well, is is interop. Um... Isn't it's the same rule for interrupt between browsers as for conferencing servers? Well, I mean, we have to, uh, you know, we have to demonstrate interoperability of the feature at both a protocol level and an API level. We don't have conferencing servers realistically that actually can work with it, and, and we don't have browsers that generate the same stuff. I think we've got a problem, um, and the charter's up in 2020. It just it just creates a lot of issues if we don't if we don't get this stuff to PR by 2020. Remember, uh, I mean, a lot of the people have been saying that we can't move on to new work until we finish this. So we'd potentially be looking at a year or two or more work on the existing 1.0 API. There could be problems in the recharter. We could have to remove the simulcast from the document entirely. It, it basically creates scenario for fairly spectacular failures of the group. Um, and um, you know, the big question is: is it is it absolutely necessary to do that, or can we just, uh, you know, meet the PR criteria and let browsers handle the transition as they would, and kind of remove that from the standards process? Right. And get so done. That, that that sounds like a question that's almost not only this working group, right? It sounds more like a network um, 
may I, IETF issue maybe? No, I don't think it's an IETF. I mean, it's an, it, the issues come up in the in the reaching you know reaching the PR stage of, for WebRTC. So it really is pretty much exclusively W3C. I mean, uh, we're not nobody's saying they want to change the ITF standard. I don't think anybody here has said that they they want to change the long term goal of getting to mids and rids. It's just a question of how we demonstrate the interop and and finish the API and. and yeah, but, but I think that's an important point. So I think my understanding from the discussion today is that it's unlikely that anything we've discussed would imply an API change. Uh, so in in the decision, well, people don't want to do an API change. It's heavier. That, that yeah. Can you let me finish? So. So uh, let's assume that there is no API change, that there is no really no decision from a WCC perspective. What we need then is something specific about demonstrating uh, interoperability of the simulcast uh, API surface. And whether that involves uh, decisions or nudges or mockups or so on, I think is a fairly different discussion from yeah, but if, if it's if it's it's basically if we're instituting a fraud to say that we've got an interoperable API when in fact nobody can really use it and this API will in reality remain proprietary, then I think that that's a real problem. If we're basically saying wink wink, nobody's actually going to use this API. Basically, uh, I agree, again, I agree. It, I agree it would be a problem. I'm not saying we need to look at a fraud. I don't think that's in anyone's benefit. I'm saying. There are many ways of looking at this problem, uh, and I'm not sure looking at it from a spec perspective when it is, in fact, an interrupt perspective is necessarily the right approach. Yeah. How many SFTs do we need working in order to say, working correctly to, according to the spec in order to claim that we um, have interrupt? Well, you should have at least one. We don't have any today. Right. So the question is, can yeah, we get I mean, one of the of the of the few that are working on this support to be ready in time? I guess that becomes the question. I think you've heard people talk about the issues that they're having. Um, but Bernan, I think that both MediaSoup and, and um, for sure Medusco are with MIDs and RIDs. Well, but you only send them in one direction, right? Can you do both directions? But uh, is mandatory that the browser supports receiving? RRDs. I mean, no SFU is going to yeah, send simulcast. Yeah, you don't. Know, it has to be. You have to be sending MIDs in both directions. Yeah, only MIDs, MID, yeah, not RIDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MIDs. Yes. Right. I only signal MIDs and RRDs. Well, that's the other issue. Is that I guess we don't have complete MID support in browsers either, right? Which browsers don't support MID? Both directions. Of course, both directions, don't we? I believe we do. Yeah, yeah. Browsers do. In fact, that's. Yep. The reason okay. of uh, of an issue when so, you so uh, it's just that the SFU can't can't send them, right? Yeah, I mean okay. I have it working with with our problems, and I think that in Yaki also. Yeah, I just disabled so, um, uh, MID in in reception in the in the peer connection that is just for receiving because the issue talk uh, talk about before because. Uh, I, I don't want uh, MID used in, in reception because I, uh, it's not uh, the real one in the RTP package. Yeah, which, as we said, is an issue when you are doing bidirectional peer connections instead, because in that case, you cannot disable it on the receiving side because it's the same peer connection as the sending side. And so, in that case, you have to, to generate or, let's say, manipulate the MID ex RTP extension on the way out as well, which, again, is doable. It's, it's a bit of a hassle, and it's uh, performance-wise, it's not ideal for, for several reasons. So that's the only objections that I would add to, to this. Well, those issue. are pretty good reasons why people might not use this on, on large scale, right, if, it, if you have a perf issue or other things. so. But the, but the perf issue is only if you have to uh, change the, the packet. If the mids conform to one byte, there's no problem, is there? Uh, that's not necessarily true because, as Inyaki said, uh, it's not only browsers up there. We, you may actually be injecting media from other tools that are not browsers, like FFmpeg, GStreamer, or whatever, as we do in many scenarios right now. In that case, you have RTP packets that don't contain any RTP extension at all. And so, you have to inject an extension, you have to manipulate the packet, move a lot of data, and you have to do this for a lot of packets and a lot of participants at the same time. So again, I'm not objecting to any of this. I'm just 
adding some, let's say, considerations about the performance yes. impact that it might have. So I understand what you're saying, but I, and I agree that that's, that's, that's an issue, but we can't say that these legacy um, systems that provide video in, I don't know, that don't, don't, don't follow the spec are part of the interop scenario. They're obviously not interoping those those uh, devices that you talk about devices that don't that don't send in, that don't send mids are not interrupting no matter what even if you munch it on the other on actually that's, not that's, uh, that, that's that's really not true because you're able to not negotiate the rids and mid header extensions stp requires that when you don't negotiate stuff it gets turned off so saying they don't interrupt that that's really not the case and in a practical sense you know if you can't use this spec with if you can't ship it you know on any large scale and you're basically and the reality is people will remain with the proprietary stuff. You have a transition problem with plan B anyway. Right. So, so, yeah, so maybe yeah, would, plan B, right? This is a performance. I mean, it, it was a small extra work, but I would challenge that it is will cause performance problems in the ASCU. Sorry, but, but so, I, I want to interject, interject here again. If there is a performance issue with a unified plan, uh, and it has an impact in uh, a number of scenarios. I think that's an IETF issue. And again, I don't want to punt the issue, but it's not a place where WCC can help. I think that's one reason I want us to focus on the particular question around uh, interrupt. And if indeed is a media soup or which ever was ISFU, sorry, I've forgotten, can help us get there, then I think at least from the purely WCC specific scope, this is just what we need. Uh, and the question about how good or bad is the overall approach is something that I think at least from what I'm hearing is not a WCC question. Yeah, Medusa SPU already support MIPS in both directions and it is already integrated with Kite. So, so going, going back to that, to that problem, a device that doesn't send MIDS is fine. It, that that is fine, but that device, it, it I don't know if it, if it can receive and it re and it doesn't receive mids. I'm not sure if that's if that's going to be according to spec, because it's going to require signaling SRCs, which is not the case, unless it only receives one video and then it's not a problem. De demonstrating interrupt with some features rejected is not the same thing as demonstrating interrupt with like the whole spec. Right. It's just we can demonstrate whatever we demonstrate. It's not an all or nothing, I guess. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying it doesn't break. The fact that, that some some systems won't send mids and won't support mids that doesn't won't break the scenario. And and like likewise, if, if we can demonstrate interrupt with send only, like having just a single uh, unidirectional thing, okay, then we just demonstrate uh, interrupt for, for that case. It's something, it's not everything. Exactly. I'm also hearing what I think is a conflict. I thought I think I'm hearing uh, legacy is not interop, and then I'm also hearing legacy is interop, and um, they can't be both. Like no, no, relying no. on legacy. I, I think no, no, if, no. If we're if we're relying on SFUs that re reject some of the functionality that we want to be part of 1.0 uh, in order to achieve interop. Then we've only uh, demonstrated interop to some extent. We haven't truly demonstrate an interrupt with, with the, the thing that we say is the 1.0 feature. Right. Yeah, there's, there's, a bunch of, there's a bunch of side issues in here. Um, right, like if sure. we want to truly demonstrate 1.0, then whatever was in the spec, that needs to be what's tested on the wire. If we want to make a transition easier, that's, that's something we can do, like adding read-only feature uh, stuff to the FTP or, or whatever. But that's separate from actually demonstrating the end goal. I, I, I agree. And again, I think we should also not be too... I mean, it's important that we demonstrate that we have confidence that what is in the, in the API uh, can work and interrupts. Uh, we cannot and should not try to demonstrate that every single possible combination of the features that are possible in the spec uh, can be shown as working. I mean, uh, what we need to show for 1.0 is that we've reached a stage where it is good enough, where people don't come and complain to me that uh, none of the browser works the same way. 
Um, okay. so, but we should done. The same way, but yeah. maybe but you heard that they're not working the same way. So right, and that needs to be fixed. But again, the way we demonstrate well, that was how what the whole issue was about, right? Because there already is enough difference between the browsers that it's already a problem. But again, the question is whether that's an API issue, and I'm hearing it's not. If it's an ATF issue, then the ATF needs to solve this. Uh, and the only thing no, we at the advocacy level need to do is, is it is an API issue because that's what 1174 was about, right? It was about the API. But the discussion seems to have converged into the fact that it is not, in fact, an API issue. No, is that's that not true. Thing? Basically, what people said is they were, they, it, it was an API issue. They would be satisfied with it changing the SDP. Right, but but, um, but it was originally in the API. It was removed in the API only because the SDP was to be put back. But Bernard, if you have, if the API, I understand that you're, you're you're seeing this as an API issue because it's going to be in the Web IDL API. But we're but I but the point is, or I think the point the point is that um, if you're adding a field to the API that that the re that it's supposed it's there to support backwards compatibility or something like that, it's not really used or it's not really in the API. You can't specify it. You can't do anything with it. It's not, it's not, it doesn't appear in the spec anywhere except the fact that, you know what, this field, you might understand this field. That's that. I think that's why we're saying it's not an API issue. The API is fine because the API doesn't contain you specifying SRCs for RTX or, or anything. It just says, you say you want these, these streams, you want these, RIDs to identify them, and you want to use RTX. That's the API. Um, may I ask a question? Because we are all the time talking about simulcast and multiple encodings, but uh, can, can we simplify this question uh, going into single encoding use cases? I mean, if I send an audio track or a video track without simulcast, uh, are we talking about also removing the SSRC from the object model and from the SD, uh, SDP, or? It, it was removed from the object model for all cases. It's no, it's not there for any case, either simulcast or non-simulcast. So no, no, no SSRC lines, no, and no, no. The SSRC lines are there in practice, but they're not in the object model. Okay. But browsers rely on these lines. As we've seen, there's a recent bug that was filed on Chrome that if a C name or something of that SSRC line with a C name is not does not appear, then then you know the the section will the video will not work. Yeah, but that, that's an, an issue, I, I understand, because yes, it's an issue. It, it should be ready to, to, to uh, match the stream, the incoming stream based on MID, for example, right? Ex exactly. That's something that we need to, that we need to fix. My, my point is that th these things should be backwards compatible. We should look at them as backwards compatibility. What we've been doing is we've been relying on them for implementation. We're saying the spec says something, we're doing something and other things as well, and we're only relying on those other things to get the interop and to get the actual connectivity between everything else. We need to be able to show, uh, this is my understanding, okay, or my interpretation, we need to be able to show that if you if you only stick to the spec, if you, only, if you don't signal SRCs, you only have uh, mids and uh, rids for simulcast or whatever, then everything will still work in at least, you know, between one browser to one SFU to a different browser, or I don't know what other, or maybe all browsers to one SFU. We need to have that scenario, I believe. Exactly, yes. Can we yeah, agree that uh, receiving SSRCs uh, will be always valid? I mean, for, rece for receiving, not for sending. J JSEP requires parsing of SSRCs and answers. No, but, but but I mean, uh, if I receive a, a remote a remote uh, SDP offer or answer with SSRCs, uh, is the browser according to the spec always be able to match incoming streams based on the signal it uh, SSRC? I, I believe that JSEP requires that. How, how is that? How so? Simulcast doesn't use SSRCs. So how does that? And JSEP also indicates simulcast. So how is, does JSEP require that you transmit SSRCs in the answer? It doesn't require that they be transmitted, but it requires they be parsed correctly if they are transmitted. Okay. Things that are, yes, I understand I understand that, but. Yeah, the answer comes from the, yeah. It, uh, that's yeah, if you put SSRCs there, yes, it, sh it should work. We, I think that's something that we agree, I think we agree on on this. But the point is that it should also work if you don't put them there. and. Right now, I think it only it works only if you put them there. 
Yeah, yeah, because they issue. Okay. Well, but uh, I think it should also work if you only have mids, right? No, because uh, an issue in Chrome that uh, spec. Yeah, but that's, uh, a bug uh, issue. that's not a spec issue. That's a bug. Yeah. Correct. There's a bug, and and I think for interop we need to show just the spec. We need to show you know uh, only mids, no SSRCs, and things working. And that that's where you can say, hey, uh, the spec it really works. Otherwise, yeah. you can say yes, the spec is there, but you know you need all these other things that we didn't document in order for it to work. Um, and I, I think that may be useful for uh, the problem about the bidirectional peer connection when using uh, MID is. Uh, the ability to set to set the uh, MID extension just for sending. This is uh, theoretically uh, possible in the SDP by by setting the uh, I think direction send only in the RTP header. But I don't think this is implemented uh, at all in, in browsers. But that may mitigate the the problem of using MID uh, in bidirectional peer connections when talking to SFU. I mean. Or at least support the receive only configuration if you receive one. I mean, yeah. Which which browser? Sorry. No, no. I mean, you, uh, if browsers can also support the ability to to receive a receive only uh, mid negotiation in that case and honor it in that case. Yeah, uh, I never tested it, but I expect it. Uh, I, well, okay, it works. No, I don't know if it works. I mean, oh. just to, to, to bring out the idea, so whether if it uh, whether if it's possible or not. Okay, okay. Okay, I think we've actually run out of time. Spent the entire meeting on <laughs> one thing. Um, Seventeen issues. I I don't know how this works, but I would schedule another meeting. I mean, okay. I don't know if, um, we, <laughs> we, if we need to get through this in order to understand if we can meet the charter, then we should. We yeah, I think do we'll that need to before. do more, more preparation to deal, uh, get some more understanding of the testing and other issues before we do that. But um, please include me on those. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's it for today. Um, we're pretty much out of time. But anyway, thank you, uh, particularly for the developers that came to give their perspective on it. Yeah, I don't know, thank you. Thanks for having us here. Take, take this to the list uh, as well. All right. Okay. Thank you. I'll stop. Bye. See you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Cheers.